today's message. Uh, let's turn to Judges, Book of Judges, chapter 16, verse 6. Book of Judges, chapter 16 and verse 6. Delilah said to Samson, So Delilah said to Samson, Please tell me where your great strength lies. Yeah, please tell me where your great strength lies. And with what? She tells Samson, saying that she's almost begging, I should, we should say. <laughs> she was asking him, please tell me. Hallelujah. Where is your strength. great strength? Lies. Hallelujah. Great strength. Where your great strength lies. Delilah said to Samson, Please tell me. So this is the, you know, worry of the enemy. And this is how he targets God's people. <coughs> Hallelujah. Wherever God's people will find the, their strength, there he is to trouble them and to disturb their strength. Hallelujah. And to distract them from receiving the strength. Here she asks him saying that, Please tell me where your great strength lies. Because the enemy, even people of God, they don't realize that great strength. But the enemy knows for well, knows for sure that we possess a great strength. We don't realize, we don't really, you know, exercise or experience or don't, you know, preserve or you don't uh, really, uh, you know, uh, have that kind of, uh, what to say, we don't realize the greatness of the strength that we possess in the Lord. Preciousness of the strength that we possess in the Lord. Delilah asks him, it's not the strength the worldly person possesses. But God's people, they have a different, totally a different kind of strength that surpasses every other understanding. Hallelujah. Oh, in the sight of a worldly person, it may not look like strength at all. But in the eyes of the enemy, the devil, not mere strength, but great strength. Hallelujah. And also, <clears throat> she continues pestering him. Verse 15. If she say, there she says, Then she said to him, Yeah. How can you say I love you? How can I how can you say I love you? When your heart is not with me. When your heart is not with me. You, you have, have mocked me. You have mocked me these three times. These three times. And have not told and me. And have not told me where your great strength lies. Where your again great strength lies. lies. Hallelujah. You say you love me. The enemy will always say. We say, oh yes, we people easily surrender to them. Your heart is not with me. People's heart, they go in line with the heart of the enemy, a mind of the enemy. Whatever he dictates, people are ready and willing to do it. Hallelujah, glory to God. Here, she says, you have mocked me these three times. And have not told me where your great strength lies. And then verse 16. And it came to pass. Yes, it came to pass. When she pestered him daily. Yes, when she pestered him daily with her words and pressed him so that his soul was wasted. She knew how to get it. The enemy will not just try and go. He will try, try, try until he gets it. Hallelujah. That means he will try his level best to get hold of God's people and to hollow his out their strength from them. And then afterwards, throw them. That's all. That's what he does. All the juice, he will just suck it out. And then he'll say, Goodbye. Till then, she was pestering him day, day, with her words, and she would press him, force him, 
so that his soul was fixed to death because his fellowship was such. Hallelujah! His fellowship was with Delilah, the demonic person, the demonic power. He is in that woman. Whoever possesses a wrong spirit, you are not supposed to have fellowship or anything to do with them, whosoever they may be. Hallelujah! Even it could be a kith and kin or one of friends or relatives or whoever closer to us. No, we do not know you. Hallelujah! Because the enemy operates through people whom we may, hallelujah, easily eat to. So we have to understand what spirit is working through that spirit, even though they are so close to you, dear to you. When it comes to God, hallelujah, no one can come between you and God. Hallelujah, no one. So in that we have to be that very careful. Hallelujah. Never, never, never ever do that. Oh, glory to God. No affection. No, she says, you say that I love you. When your heart is not with me, all the sweet words she speaks to him. And she pesters him. And she forced him, dressed him, so that his soul was vexed to death. Openly, boldly, she says, how can, where lies your great strength and how can we bind you? With what we can bind you? Oh, hallelujah, glory to God. It is for destruction. Destruction. He should have known that and fled away from her. Hallelujah. Instead, he continued in that relationship. He continued in the friendship. Continued in that. Hallelujah. So what happened? That he told her all his heart and said to her all the secrets. Amen. When it comes to Mary, the mother of Jesus, when she was told that she is going to be conceived with the Holy Spirit and she is going to give birth to the Holy One, the Word of God says she kept it in her heart and wandered upon it. She never dis disclosed it to closed it to anybody else. Hallelujah! God's people, we have to keep certain things and meditate in our hearts. Hallelujah! All those things that God shares with us. So the enemy is so very interested in the strength of God's people where God's people themselves, they do not realize the power of the strength that they have. And they are not cautious about it to preserve it and to continue to be strengthened in it. Hallelujah. And to strengthen themselves in the Lord. They are so careless, lethargic, slothful. They do so many things in the name of God, but they, oh hallelujah, miss the earth. And they do not really do what they really have to do to receive to be strengthened, to be powerful, to be, hallelujah, strong in the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. So here, like Delilah, the devil also daily, daily pesters God's children, distracts, disturbs, troubles them, so that they don't become strong in the Lord. He will do all his level best to interfere in our lives and to distract us from things that would strengthen us in the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what we are going to see, meditate this evening. What would really strengthen us? Hallelujah. What is the strength of our, our lives? Hallelujah. David says in Psalm 18, 1, he says, Oh, hallelujah, glory to God. I love you, O Lord, my strength. Hallelujah. I love you, O Lord, my strength. Hallelujah. He did not say, give me strength. Is please read that. 18. I will love you. 1. 18. 1. I will love you, O Lord. I will love you, O Lord. My strength. My strength. He is my strength. He is not giving me strength. He is my strength itself. Hallelujah. Psalm 27 again, he said, the, strong, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? He is the man of challenge. Hallelujah. Secret being, 
is the strength of my life. Hallelujah! That's why he was able to face Goliath. That's how, that's how he was able to, hallelujah, face all the, you know, powerful enemies and to defeat them like nothing. He was always courageous. He was never afraid. The reason is, he is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Hallelujah. He was a fearless person, courageous person. The reason, secret being, the Lord being his strength. The strength of his life. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Instead, the enemy... Oh, hallelujah, the subtlety of the enemy diverts man's attention from God being our strength. He diverts him saying that, make flesh your strength. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 17, verse 5. Please read. 17, Jeremiah 17 and verse 5. Thus says the Lord. Thus says the Lord. Cursed is the man. Cursed is the man who trusts in man. Who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength. Yes, makes flesh his strength. Whose heart departs from the Lord. What will happen if people make flesh their strength? Their heart will definitely depart from the Lord. Hallelujah. So that's why the enemy says, Oh. Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength. People, instead of keeping calm, their strength. Oh, hallelujah. When we depend on our own ability, on our own, uh, you know, uh, all kinds of, you know, I mean, uh, uh, capacities. Oh, I can do this, I can do this, I can do that. Apostle Paul says, he was such a learned person, he was such a capable person, such a... A wealthy person, he says, after the encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. So who makes flesh his strength, if we do, I can do this now, I can finish. I, 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 the I, the great I will do all our strength. Hallelujah. Instead of keeping God, the great strength, hallelujah, of our lives. Oh, praise the Lord. Makes flesh a strength. Even though things that we are able to do. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. If we only lean on Him. Depend on Him. Hallelujah. We can do valiantly. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. People think, oh, what we can do, we, we have to do. What we cannot do, that we can do trouble Jesus. Why to disturb Jesus very often? He loves to be disturbed. Hallelujah. He wants to be disturbed by his children. Hallelujah. Always keeping in contact, keeping in touch with him, keeping in constant contact with him. Hallelujah. Communication. Then only we receive, we desire that power, power, the connection brings the power into our lives. Hallelujah. That's why David's secret, if you keep reading David's experiences, it will be wonderful. He says, I have set the Lord always before me. Because he's at my right hand, I shall never be moved. Hallelujah. He also, Psalmist says, Psalm 125, 5, He who trusts in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion. It shall not be moved. Hallelujah. The strength, the power of a child of God. So, he makes the one who makes this flesh his strength, automatically we may do many things in the name of God but our heart departs from God dependency on God leaning on God total trust on the Lord hallelujah we'll go away we'll go away that's what the enemy says do this he try to tie word saying that you do this do this do this and like Martha she was busy in doing so many things, having invited Jesus in her fam life, family, or house. She became very busy attending to so many other household works. She had no time for Jesus, thinking she would be appreciated by Jesus. 
and also she comes and complains about her sister who was sitting at the feet of Jesus listening to his word. And also, after complaining about Jesus, she's grumbling about she complaining about her sister, she's not grumbling about Jesus. Don't you care about this Lord? How she has left me alone to work? Hallelujah. So that's how we he just go to this. Suppose we are busy, even in ministry, we cannot become busy. Hallelujah. Oh, God doesn't want busy people in the ministry. God wants people who are available at His feet for His ministry. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. So, cursed is the man who makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. So, what happens? The enemy knows, oh, his strength is in the Lord. If I only divert him like this, go do this, do this. He keeps giving us instructions and we will also dance. People dance according to his tune. They lose the power of God, connectivity with God. Hallelujah. So, see, just imagine us as the teaming up with God. What great power we get. When we lose that fellowship, that's what the enemy does. Next thing, we'll quickly see into... We have so many things we have uh, here to meditate. Uh, quickly I'll show you. Then the next thing we'll see. Hallelujah. Isaiah 30 verse 15. For thus says the Lord God. For thus says the Lord God. The Holy One of Israel. The Holy One of Israel. In returning and rest, in returning and rest, you shall be saved. You shall be saved in quietness and confidence. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. Shall be your strength. Hallelujah. First of all, God is our strength. If we are, we are going to see in that survey days like in returning, returning to the Lord. Hallelujah. After going. In our minds and spirits away from God, now coming back to God, returning, returning and rest, you shall be saved. Our salvation is there. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Returning, repenting, turning towards God. Hundred percent right about turn to God. And then rest. Hallelujah. Total dependency, surrender, submission to God. Because when we are busy, the enemy, hallelujah, glory to God, when we are on our own, the enemy that brings in all his stuff into us, like spirit of rebellion, spirit of stubbornness, spirit of disobedience, spirit of hardness, spirit of what not, hallelujah, all that stuff. Pride, spirit of, you know, all kinds of, you know, self, selfish ambitions, selfish Hallelujah, glory to God. Nature, self-seeking is demonic, we read in James 3rd chapter. All these things he bring into the lives of God's people and harden our hearts against God. That's why we need for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are strong to the pulling down of the strongholds through which we pull down all the arguments and all every all the high mindedness or all the high thinkings that are that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Second Corinthians ten four. So the the way that we ought to understand God, know him, that understanding he closes. The mere knowledge the religious people possess about God, that alone will be, will remain in such people. Hallelujah! That's why always Jesus rebuked the religious people in those days. Hallelujah! They were not able to discern God spiritually, not to know Him, to understand Him personally. Their personal understanding was close because of the high-mindedness, exalting themselves against the knowledge of God. All those things will take rule over our spirit and mind. So that's why what do we do? Returning in returning and rest is our salvation. David also sinned against God. Then he says, he, he saw the lifestyle of uh, I mean, uh, King Saul. Then how the Holy Spirit left him and how he was tormented. Then now David humbled himself, returned to God, 
saying that, cast me not away from your presence, Lord. Take not the Holy Spirit from me. Hallelujah. And then create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit in me. Hallelujah. Give me this joy of salvation. Hallelujah. Restore unto me the joy of salvation. He just gets it back. Hallelujah. That is the strength. Salvation. Joy is getting it back. And then when we come back to, into the right relationship with God. Setting right our relationship with God. Setting right ourselves with hallelujah, God the Almighty. Setting our ways right before God or setting our lifestyle right with God. According to his expectation. People have their lifestyle according to their expectation. They think they are right in their eyes. But we have to always look through the eyes of Jesus Christ through the word of God. The word of God is like a mirror. Hallelujah. It will reflect our nature, ourselves. So we can understand about ourselves. So, hallelujah, glory to God. We have in returning and rest shall be, you shall be saved. And after that, when you come back to God, all that God wants you to do is in quietness, in quietness and confidence shall be your strength. Now the Lord would say, I don't want you to do anything, but I want you to relax in me. Be still and know that I am God. Hallelujah! Psalm 46 towards end, the end. And then uh, Exodus 14, Moses says, Be still and see the salvation of the Lord. When our spirit is still, still means not perturbed, not disturbed, not troubled. Hallelujah! At peace. That is one with God. When we are one with God, we are at peace with God and at heart and in mind. Mm. Hallelujah. All the cares of this world troubles us so much. Hallelujah. Cast your word and on to Jesus. We are going to see all that. So we have to be still and know that He is God. In quietness and in confidence, that is all. When you, only when you are quiet, your spirit is quiet. Holy Spirit is a gentle spirit. He will move. Hallelujah. Over your spirit. When you are a troubled spirit, only evil spirit will start working because he is a troubled person. Evil spirit is what? Restless person. So he needs a restless spirit. Holy Spirit is a gentle spirit. He needs a quiet spirit. And even in lots of Verses coming to my mind, but we have a lots of things to meditate. First Peter, we read third chapter. Oh, quietness, hallelujah. Oh, and meekness is the spirit which God loves so much. Hallelujah. They are, hallelujah, of more value in the eyes of God. Meekness and quietness, quiet spirit. Quiet spirit, with, no, I won't talk with you. No, your spirit should be at rest. Quietness and Total confidence on the Lord, not on me. I cannot, but I, I trust. Morning also is so. Our trust on the Lord. Hallelujah. He is existence of God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. So, uh, we are going to see all that. So, we have to, that should be our strength. Our, should, our spirit should be at rest with God. When, it, when is it possible? When we trust, put our trust, He is our only trustworthy. Hallelujah. He is only trustworthy. So when you trust on the Lord, when your confidence is on the Lord, not on anything else. Some trust in chariots, some in horses. But we will trust in the Lord our God. Hallelujah. People put their confidence in their money, in their wealth, in their job, in their studies, in their family, in so many things. Oh, this I have, that I have. We have to have a confidence. I have Jesus in me. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Amen. We should have that confidence. Oh, hallelujah, glory to God. That is all sufficient. That brings, brings great strength in us. Hallelujah. Thirdly, we are going to see quickly. Hallelujah, glory to God. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. Please read. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. 
You therefore, you therefore, my son, my son, be strong in the grace. Yeah, me be strong in the grace. That is in Jesus Christ Jesus. Yes, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Third thing, how can we bear our strength? Hallelujah. In the grace of God. In the grace of God. Christians, hallelujah, glory to God. They cannot survive. They cannot continue to be a Christian without the grace of God. Hallelujah. Apostle Paul is the best example. He says, I am what I am, but by the grace of God. Grace of God. He totally was on the grace of God. Be strong. That's why he exhorts Timothy saying that my son be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. What was the grace in John's gospel first chapter 1? We read he was filled with hallelujah grace and the truth. Hallelujah. Both together. Amen. The grace that was in Jesus was filled with the truth. Word. Please read if you want John's gospel chapter 1 14. And the word became flesh. And the word became flesh. And dwelt among us. Dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. Yeah, we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Yeah. Mm, please uh, Father, mm. full of grace and truth. Full of grace. He was full of grace and truth. Mere grace alone. Many people, grace, grace, grace. Grace for what? Continue to... You can continue in your sinful way. You can continue however you want to be. You can live God is gracious. No. He was full of grace and truth. Both together. And even here, verse 17, the latter part, please read. But grace and truth. Grace and truth. Came through Jesus Christ. Came through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Grace and truth. Grace and truth in many places in Proverbs you read, if you read in Psalms, everywhere, many places, all together. Grace and truth will come together. Hallelujah. So if grace is there, truth. Truth also, many times I used to think, I used to, before and all, I know in Tamil and all, very strong message and it has to accompany with the grace of God. Hallelujah. And grace of God, it has to be accompanied with the truth of God. Both together. So, be strong in the grace that was in Christ Jesus. So, grace and truth together. And Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 10, he says, I labor the Lord than any other apostle. Hallelujah. But not me, the grace that was in me. Hallelujah. You will be able to, you will be able to do enormous, greater and mighty things for God in the name of God. Not with your strength, but with the grace of God. Apostle Paul, what's the secret, success of your ministry? It's nothing but the grace of God. How come you were able to accomplish so much than any other apostle? He would say, it's nothing but the grace of God. He was leaning and totally leaning and depending and living on the grace of God. It was like a, he was breathing the grace of God. And when he was always also boasting about the grace of God. So when a time of difficulty came, thorn in the flesh, he called out to God, Lord, please remove this thorn out of me. The Lord said, no, 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 you have it. My grace is sufficient for you. Hallelujah. That means Apostle Paul then only realized, oh, whenever I am weak, then I am strong. Because when I am weak, hallelujah, then the power of God, the strength of God comes upon me, rests upon me. 2 Corinthians 12, verses 9, onwards, 9, 10, 11. If you read it, a wonderful passage. Hallelujah. Whenever I am weak, oh, glory to God. I have experienced this a lot. I am still experiencing tasting. Because the weakest person, Caleb said, when I started the journey, you know, I was 45 years, now 85 years, I have the same strength. But I would say, when I started the minute, when I started my Christian race for 20 years now, hallelujah, 31 years, 
This is not the same strength, but it's not greater strength. Amen. Hallelujah. I was a weak person when I got saved. But now, renewed like an eagle. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the secret. Why? What? Depending on the grace of God. To whom does the Lord give grace to the humble? Last time, last week also I mentioned, we need to keep remaining humble, not only before God, to possess a meek and humble spirit. Jesus says, I am meek and lowly, learn of me. Hallelujah. So, it is very difficult. So, that's why, I mean, I, we were able to speak and also we have to practice. We have to remain humble everywhere, anywhere, before anybody. <laughs> Whether younger or greater or smaller, to to possess the right kind of spirit. Just to, you know, uh, overcome the devil. Hallelujah! To put down the devil. Because he is the one filled with pride. The I, the great I. He would always say, I, 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 in Isaiah chapter 14 about Lucifer. And within the two verses, he says five times, I will, I will, and I will. So, Jesus also had to practice this humility. He practiced it. Before going to the cross, he just girded on with the uh, loins, with the uh, thing, and then claw, 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 and then he started washing the feet of his disciples. Why? Why? <coughs> he wanted to exercise. Hallelujah! He wanted to ease, maybe his spirit, if they, since he came, the word of God says he came in the form of sinful flesh. The sinful flesh would not allow, allow him to uh, yield to the cross of Calvary, to humble himself to the death of cross. Hallelujah! Death on the cross. So to humble his spirit, he had to put it in action. And the word of God says, Philippians 2, uh, 6 onwards. Although he was in the form of God, hallelujah, he did not count it robbery, hallelujah, but he, to be equal with, to be God. Equal with God, but he made himself, made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant, yes, taking the form of a bond servant, and coming in, and the, likeness coming in the likeness of men. men, what did he do? And being found mm. in appearance, mm. As man, as he, man, he humbled himself. Humbled till where? And became obedient. Yeah, he humbled himself and became obedient. To the point of death. To the point of death. Even, even the death of the cross. Yes, even the death of the cross. He had to humble. So humbling ourselves is, you know, oh, without really exercising, it is, it is, it is a fake thing. I would say, it's, it's not easy. But when we practice it, Jesus, that's why he said, take up your course and follow me. Deny yourself. And daily, daily do that. Daily practice it. Then only the godly nature will be formed in us. Or in the form of godliness, demonic nature only will prevail. So many dangers are there. In Christianity, people take it, oh, she can preach, I can also preach, I can also do this and that. They end up becoming, you know, the, what to say, product of the demonic forces. Because they don't practice Christ. So sad, most of the Christians, they have a godly form, but they don't have God in them. The God of the ages, the enemy, the devil, since they practice his qualities, he owns them, he claims them for him. Hallelujah. So, grace of God is so very important. And we have to really remain humble. And every day they are new every morning. Hallelujah. We have to keep receiving and receiving and receiving, filled with the grace of God and just see how what you can do with that. Hallelujah. That which you cannot do with your strength, with the grace of God, you will do how many times? I can't say that. You can do tremendous things. In my personal life, it, sometimes I won't have the, I mean, no, I won't have anybody to help or in, at home, at, uh, you know, in the, in the 
in church and wherever. I say, I can do all things. I won't say, but I'll act on it. <laughs> God does everything for me. And everybody will be surprised how this is possible. Hallelujah! Oh, glory to God. It's the possible. By the grace of God, we can do great things. Hallelujah! So, we'll move on to the fourth thing. We'll, we have lots of things. The grace only will take us to the... Uh, in the coming of the Lord also, in 1 Peter 1.13, we read at, the, at His revelation, the day, the grace that is to appear, that is to be given at the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are starting our race, Christian race with grace, finishing it with grace. Amen. And that is the strength. You have to lean on the grace of God, not on our own understanding. And Isaiah 40.31, Please read quickly, we are going to rush up. Isaiah 14 verse 31. But those who wait on the Lord. Yeah, those who wait on the Lord. Shall renew their strength. Shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. Yeah, they shall mount up with wings, wings like, like eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. They shall walk and not faint. Hallelujah. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Waiting on the Lord is what? Waiting at the feet of Jesus. Pouring out our heart at the feet of Jesus. Praying. Many people think, why should I pray? God knows everything. God knows everything, but cast your burden. Before casting your burden, waiting upon the Lord is to have personal communion with God, communication with God. Jesus himself had to do that. Hallelujah. When he was on this earth, the word of God says, he prayed all throughout the night. The word of God says, hallelujah, he went up to the mountains early in the morning to pray to God the Father. Hallelujah. The word of God says he fasted and prayed for 40 days. Hallelujah. He went by the oh, yeah, you know, anointing of the Holy Spirit, went by the power of uh, strength. If, uh, if you read in Luke's gospel, hallelujah, glory to God. He was led by the Spirit of God into the wilderness and he fasted for 40 days. He came back with the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. He was led by the Holy Spirit. And he came back after waiting upon the Lord with the power. If you want, you read. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Luke's Gospel, chapter 4. Right? Um, then Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm, first verse. First verse. Uh, then Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, Jesus being filled. So being filled with the Holy Spirit is not sufficient. If he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Returned from the Jordan. Returned from the Jordan. And was led by the Spirit. And led by the Spirit. Into the wilderness. Into the wilderness and he fasted. Verse 14. Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Yes. Jesus returned in the power of his Spirit. What did he do? All these 40 days he was waiting upon God the Father. Hallelujah. Went in. Led by the Spirit, in the, with the fullness of the Holy Spirit, that is not sufficient. When people think we speak in tongues, oh, we have achieved everything. No. That anointing should become strength and power. For which we need to pray. We need to stay at His feet. Hallelujah. Daniel, one kind of fasting he was taking for. He was praying, he was applying his mind, the word of God says in chapter 10. To seek the Lord, he sought the Lord. And he didn't get anything. So 21 days he was waiting upon the Lord. And what happened? He didn't know that. But there was a war going on. Hallelujah. In the spiritual realm. God sent his messenger on the very first day. The messenger couldn't reach Daniel because there was war in the spiritual realm. So... Gabriel, the messenger, comes on the 21st day, says, tells Daniel, Daniel, on the very first day, God answered your prayer, but I couldn't come because I'm just a messenger. Oh, God had to send, because your fervent prayer, God sent Michael, the archangel, to fight against the prince of Persia, hallelujah, to defeat him and made way for me to reach you with my message. Hallelujah. 
So we need to, why we need to pray? There are spiritual hosts of wickedness, hosts of spiritual wickedness in high heavenly places. The more steadfast we pray, we pray and we pray, they'll be scattered and that'll make a way for us. Oh, hallelujah, prayers to reach up to heaven. Hallelujah. So prayer, prayer, prayer. People say, give, that's, what, that's what I'm saying, the enemy knows our strength. That's why he will not allow us, his people, God's people to pray. Oh, you don't have time. I can't pray. I'm not able to pray. All sorts of excuses people give and they fail to pray. They have time to talk to people, ask together. Because they pour out their hearts to the people, they don't have anything to pour out at the feet of Jesus when they go to God in prayers. But Anna, what did she do? Anna, Hannah. What did she do? Hallelujah. She kept all her burdens. Not even did she share with her husband. Hallelujah. When people, you know, we say that if we feel easy to cast our burden to haunt to somebody else, telling all our problems and we feel relieved, we feel only, but problems are not solved. Hallelujah. But Hannah, she didn't even confide those things to her husband. She went straight to the presence of God poured out her heart and wept bitterly at the feet of Jesus, after which she was not. Hallelujah, sorrowful. Amen. Amen. Anyone? Anyway, so when we don't speak or share anything with people, we have lots to share with God. Hallelujah. We can spend hours and hours together. He will not get bored. Hallelujah. And he will not turn a deaf ear. When you share with people, they sometimes they may listen, so to a certain extent they may listen, sometimes they mock at you, sometimes they may criticize, sometimes they may not, hallelujah. But it is always good to speak to God, who is always willing to listen and to answer our prayers. Hallelujah! He cares for us. So prayers means, that, let me not tell you, just casting is not a burden bearer. He's not a burden bearer. First, we need to adore Him, worship Him, glorify Him, hallelujah, honor Him. You should have the reverence, the relationship, develop the relationship with God through prayers. That is why we need to pray. And then, hallelujah, finally, you can cast all your burdens onto Him. Do not be not anxious, but Hallelujah. Let your supplications and prayers be made known to God with thanksgiving. Then the peace of God will rule your heart and your mind. Hallelujah. So, casting our burden is final. That's what I used to tell, like how last week also we saw. We're writing an application. First step, then finally they we say, thanking you, yours faithfully. We thank you. So like that we finish. So first worship Him, adore Him, glorify Him, magnify Him. Oh, develop the relationship with God and then speak to Him. Then He will be also willing to listen to our prayers. Interest. Hallelujah. So we will also feel that we have submitted our petitions in the right place. And then, uh, next point, how many points? Just point, I think. Say, 1 Kings 19.8. Quickly, please read. Where do we get strength, our strength? 1 Kings 19.8 so, so, he arose He arose And ate and drank uh, Elijah arose and ate and drank And he went in the strength of that food He went in the, went in the strength of that food Forty days Forty days And forty nights Forty nights As far as Horeb uh, As far as Horeb The mountain of God The mountain of God Hallelujah he went in the strength of that food. From where do we get our food? Strength. Hallelujah. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Truly every child of God, they will not live by bread alone. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The word of God. In Isaiah 55 verses 2 and 3. Then Isaiah says, please read quickly. 
Isaiah 55 verses 2 and 3. Why do you spend money for what is not bread? Yeah, why do you spend money for what is not bread? And your wages for what does not satisfy? And your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me. Listen carefully. Listen carefully to me. And eat what is good. And eat what is good. How do we eat God's people? Two years. Listen carefully to me and eat what is good. And let your soul delight let itself. Let your soul delight itself. In abundance. Yes, your soul will delight. Your soul will delight only when you give its food. Many people starve their soul. Feed their body that will perish. Starve the soul which would live forever. The word of God says, let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear and your soul shall live. Hallelujah. Then automatically, beloved, as your soul prospers, so will you prosper in all things, even in health. The secret of a Christian is that. Your, your soul should prosper. If you prosper in your soul, if you feed your soul with the living word of God, the word of God says, eat that which is good. Not every sermon, not every preaching, not every... There are also junk foods, there are also harmful foods in Christian preaching that will harm our soul, that will damage our soul. That will devour the strength of the soul. All kinds of easy teachings, easy doctrines, all kinds of, what kinds, what can I say, deceptive powers that will make you to turn your ears to fables, not to the truth of God. Many having lost their love for the truth. Hallelujah in 2 Thessalonians 2.10. The word of God says, God himself will give them over to believe the lies for them to be content. So many people lose their love for truth. You need not be that strict that way. You need not be strict. You have to develop a love for the word of God. Delight yourself in the word of God and meditate upon it day and night. You should have the delight. That's what I told you once I preached in Ludhiana. Many college, Bible college students were attending and I was preaching so vehemently in the morning. God gave me the message on the word of God and I was preaching. One boy just like that he stood up and said, that's what we are reading every day. <laughs> I told them every day, morning and night and you have to meditate, you have to that this and all. I said, then he said, oh that's what we are doing. It So much of, you know, bitterness and you know, disgusted he was. That's what we read and we have to learn every day and night. Then immediately Holy Spirit prompted me to tell him, do you read it with delight or just for the sake of learning or for your Bible, you know, college studies, you're doing it. Just try to read it with delight towards love for the truth and see. And after the sermon he came to me and thank me for that. Hallelujah. If you read it out of duty, say, oh, it will be, you will not nah, delight in it, you don't find, you oh, hallelujah, you will just nourish it if you only have a prepared heart and reverential heart towards God's word. The Lord will look upon whom those who tremble at his word. He magnifies his word above every other thing. So also we should. Hallelujah. It's a food for the soul. If your soul prospers, you will prosper in every other thing. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then we move on to Romans 4.20. We have lots we can talk, but we don't have time. Romans 4.20 quickly. So we need to know where we have our strength, where lies our great strength. The enemy knows it. And he, he let him not steal it. Jesus, he comes to, he's a thief, comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. Hallelujah. We should know to preserve it. Romans 4.20 He did not waver at the promise of God. Yeah, Abraham. 
did not waver at the promises of God through unbelief. Through unbelief. But was strengthened in faith. Yes, Abraham was strengthened in faith. Giving glory to God. Giving glory to God. Hallelujah. He was strengthened. Next power, strength. Where do we have? In faith. Oh, hallelujah. He was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. He did not waver at the promises of God through unbelief. Unbelief, the enemy will bring it in. Even for Abraham, it would have, he tried it because he says he did not waver at the promise through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith. How? Oh, giving glory to God. Hallelujah. That's how we can become strong in faith. Because the previous verse 19, not being weak in faith, he did not consider. Underline that word. He did not consider his own body already dead. Since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb, he did not consider, he did not consider the prevailing situation, prevailing condition. He did not take it to the heart. He did not take it to the mind. He did not tell it out to people. He did not give any weightage to it. Instead, he was saying, I am not at all going to look into it, think about it. I am going to, I am bothered about the fulfillment, fulfillment of the promise of God in my life. That is, that, that, body, that is what is bothering me. Hallelujah. That's what bothers me. For God's word to be fulfilled. That has to be fulfilled. I am least bit bothered about the condition of my body or the womb of self. He did not waver. He took God at his word. Hallelujah. He did not consider human intellect will always interfere with God. Oh, hallelujah. Both will not. Worldly wisdom is foolishness to God. God's wisdom is foolishness to the world. He who believes in God, he should believe that he is the existence of God. Whatever the enemy tries to do, you know, hallelujah, Job, he couldn't turn away his faith from God. Hallelujah. Job said, oft, after losing everything, he said, God gave it and God would, get, took it. Praise be to the, blessed be the name of the Lord. That's why last week God's people we sing, blessed be the name of the Lord. They'll sing very beautifully with all, you know, twists and turns. In, a, in, the, in the situation of Job, he said that. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. He never sinned against God. He never, oh hallelujah, said God was wrong. Never did he do that. If we have received good from God, should we not receive evil also? Or oh, he never, what, and instead he said, my Redeemer lives. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Hello, chapter 2, Job chapter 2. Verse 10, is it? In all this, yeah. Job did not sin with his lips. Yeah, in all this, Job did not sin with his lips. Nor did he did not sin. Yeah, verse 2, first chapter 2, uh, 22. 22. In all, all this, this, Job did not sin. Now charge God with wrong. Hallelujah. He did not charge God with wrong. If anything had gone wrong, it is with me. Nothing to do with God. He always, hallelujah, was fervent about it. Hallelujah. So, faith. See, last days we are living in, even last week I said, how falling away is happening that shows the coming of the Lord as imminent. Many people, I, we see, if you see the videos and all uploaded, many Christian preachers, People, missionaries are there, converted to Islam. Evangelists, they say, we are Pentecostal family. My wife was an evangelist, I was an evangelist. Now we have converted. Another boy is saying, I am a pastor's son. Converted. Falling away is happening. Why? This man, so-called pastor, was doing, you know, God, even, you know, some kind of statement of faith God honored and did work in that ministry since he was not rooted in the truth in the word of God 
Hallelujah. He couldn't stand the test and trials of faith. Hallelujah. Falling away is happening everywhere. We have to strive hard. That's why Apostle Paul exhorts Timothy, fight the good fight of faith. All that we have, we may lose everything and anything, but lay hold on eternal life for which you have been caught. Amen. Apostle Paul also tells about him, second, this is in 1 Timothy 6.12. Then 2 Timothy 4, hallelujah, glory to God. There he says, I have run the race. What did I do? I fought the fight. I fought, fought the good fight. Run the race. Hallelujah. Finish my course and kept my faith. That's the final, final finishing end of a Christian. Kept my faith. Hallelujah. We have to make a wage the war, good war, warfare for our faith. I always used to tell you there was a great conference, big conference happening. I mean, a whole, a atheists were holding in uh, London some years back and came in the newspapers and they said, you come join us. You have nothing, nothing to lose but your faith. Hallelujah. Some way or other the enemy is bargaining the faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. And so many things may happen that would make you to stink or even to be proving the non-existence of God if you are not strong in the Lord. Shadrach, Meshach, Abed, Nebuchadnezzar, what did they just say? We know that the Lord whom we worship is able to deliver us, even if he's not going to deliver us, we will not bow down before the title. He is able, we should know. Only if he keeps doing, he is not God. Even if he is not doing, even if you are not receiving, yes, still he is my God, because he is the one and only true living God. We are not living for this earthly life, believing on him. Hallelujah. We are believing in him for the eternal life. Hallelujah. So why should anything that happens in the world should affect us, bother us, oh, weaken our faith? No. Hallelujah. Okay, finish. We'll finish quickly. Nehemiah 8 10. Nehemiah 8 10. Please, please go home and God, take, bring, call, recall all those things and strengthen yourself in all these areas. Nehemiah 8 10 says, The joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah. So we need to be joyful. Delight yourself in the Lord, your God. He will grant the desires of your heart. Hallelujah. And uh, Apostle Paul says in Philippians 4, Rejoice in the Lord, and again I say, Rejoice. Because the, uh, in Isaiah 61, the Isaiah's prophet says, He has not given me the spirit of heaviness. The enemy will always bring the spirit of heaviness, the oppressor. We have to keep confessing. He has not given me the spirit of heaviness. He has given me the garment of praise. Keep praising God, glorifying God, and you will receive the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah! He has given me ashes, but beauty for ashes and spirit of heaviness. Instead of that, he's given me a garment of praise. Keep praising him. Be joyful in him. Hallelujah. Because that is our strength. The enemy knows that. Because that's why he brings all sorrows, all heaviness, all kinds of burdens, all kinds of, you know, sadness in our lives. How can I be joyful? How can we be joyful? This earthly sorrow. This earthly things, cast your cares and burdens onto the Lord. Hallelujah. If you only taste and see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. In His presence there is fullness of joy. Psalm 18, towards the end, Psalm says, There are joy, unspeakable. In the presence of God, the more you spend your time in the presence of God, you will experience the Lord. Also, Jesus also says, I give my... My joy unspeakable to my disciples. Hallelujah. In spite of what happens, God's children can remain joyful if you are only contented with the Lord. You will be you will face the, you, will, you will experience the joy of the Lord with hallelujah. Bring the strength in you, the sadness of the world. I mean even uh, second Corinthians um, seven ten. Godly sorrow brings repentance. Only godly sorrow is permitted in the life of a Christian. We can be sorrowful about our spiritual life, our relationship with God, that is permitted. Worldly sorrow works death. 
Hallelujah. We have to be careful. And then Acts 14, 22. Strengthening the souls of the disciples. Strengthening the souls of the disciples. Exhorting them to continue in the faith. Exhorting them to continue in the faith. And saying. And saying. We must through many we must tribulations, through many tribulations enter, enter the kingdom, kingdom of God. God. Hallelujah. Where do we derive our strength from? The fellowship, the gathering, the church. Hallelujah. Apostle Paul strengthening the souls of the disciples. How? Brother, God will give you a house, God will give you an aeroplane, God will give you this and that. No, he said through many tribulations you have to enter into the kingdom of God because people don't hear these kinds of teachings, they fall away when the trials and tests come. Hallelujah! He strengthened the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in faith and saying we must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. <clears throat> so when we come to the fellowship, right kind of fellowship, right kind of preaching, right kind of, you know, hallelujah, church gathering, there we are strengthened. Finally, Acts 1.8, we know when the Spirit of the Lord comes, you shall receive power. Hallelujah. And then Ephesians 6.10, the same, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. And then First Peter also we read to the power of God we are protected and preserved. So when you when you receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit, when you lean on the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is given for us to be empowered by the power of God. Hallelujah! The power of resurrection, the Spirit of God always says the Spirit of God who raised Jesus Christ from the dead is our hope. Hallelujah! That hope only is going to raise us up from the dead if we die. Or if you are alive, you'll be caught up in the air in the twinkling of a moment's time, eyes time, a moment's time. Hallelujah, the Lord comes back, it turns back in the mid-air, that is for prepare God's children. Hallelujah. The second coming is for the left behind and for the Antichrist and his team to be dealt with. Hallelujah. So let's get ready.